Ladies and gentlemen, nerds and nerdlets, my fellow hackers, I am here for the last bit of the web server sort of setup tutorial. In the previous video, we covered setting up uh, Linux, obviously, and Nginx as the web server. Some very, very basic configuration to get Nginx to do the thing that it is best at, which is serving a static application. We also installed uh, PHP FPM, the Fast CGI Process Manager, so that Nginx can talk to PHP and hand off uh, things that need the PHP interpreter, and then get back some sort of content to stick in a web page to have the magic of uh, dynamic web applications, such as Facebook and other things that are spying on you. The example application we're going to install here is WordPress. It's going to be very quick. So this assumes only that you've followed the video so far, which means you've got a Linux server. It actually really doesn't matter if it's Linux, FreeBSD, any Unix derived system uh, will do. And um, you need Nginx installed. That's about it. Uh, any, I, I think the Nginx config file I will paste in the comments or in the description here. So you'll have that, you can just copy and paste that out. Okay, let's get started. We are here on the terminal. Uh, I'm just keeping track of my settings. I could do this in the background, but I want to really note that this is important. I have actually set up things before it and then realized that I didn't write down configuration information. You should always keep a log of what you're doing. Step by step, just write it down. It doesn't have to be nicely organized, but just so you have a log of what you have done. Okay. We're going to get into our MySQL database, and we're going to create a new database for this application. We're going to create a new user that has access to that database, and then we're going to set up the application itself with its own config file for the web server. So the web server knows what to do with it. Okay. Um, so MySQL, we're going to log in with the user root, and we're going to say, please prompt me for the password. I'm going to type in my very, very secure production password, which is database. And this is the MySQL prompt. So it's really just like a, a shell into your, uh, into your database environment. Uh, we're going to create a database. I'm not going to cover basic SQL or whatever here. I'm this is really just what you need to set up a new database for WordPress. Uh, we're just going to say uh, WordPress test is what we'll name the database. Terminate commands uh, or statements, SQL statements with a semicolon. So this thing says, all right, I've done something. Now we're going to create a user for that database to go along with it. So we'll say create user, and that'll be sort of user at MySQL server, and then the password. So we'll say user wp test at localhost. So on this machine, on the MySQL install of that, that's present on this machine here, we're going to create the user wp test. And then we'll say identified by these little string delimiters here. So single quote. And then we'll say password. And we'll just say WP test pass. Bang, that creates the user. So we'll just say, I've already forgotten it. This is great. This is why you WP test pass. Okay. And so now we have a new database and a new user. And we're going to tie those together by granting privileges on that database to that user. So we'll say grant all privileges on WordPress test dot all. So this is all tables in this database. So WordPress test dot star for like the glob character, all of this to WP test at localhost. Okay. We'll just say uh, databases WordPress tests. Okay, we have the user, we've got the database, and now the user has access to all the tables of that database. So all on WordPress test. Now we can just uh, flush privileges and exit. Bye. So now we're dumped back out onto our command prompt. We'll go into downloads and we'll just say, we're going to get the latest copy of WordPress. And they do a really nice thing where they simply stick their latest version of WordPress 
it's always called the same thing. So you can put this in a script and it'll always work. Uh, my speed is abysmal for some reason. So I'm just going to pause it right here while we uh, figure out what's going on here. I must have some kind of interference happening right now. Ugh, that's ugly. All right, I'll be back when this is done. Once that download is finished, we've got it there. So tar to unzip it, to uncompress this. Extract verbose. Oops. We're unzipping this. It should give us a WordPress directory. Uh, and you can see if we list WordPress, we've got it there. Uh, we're going to copy this into where's our uh, our site root's going to be. Uh, I'll just show you because I'm not entirely sure myself. I like to keep things in var dub 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 and then uh, have different directories owned by different users. But we can always check by going into Nginx's configuration directory, saying sites available, and just picking the default site, and it'll tell you where it has its own default site. And you can see root is user share Nginx HTML. That's the path to its root directory. But we're going to have a different one. We're going to do this in var www. Let's see if that exists. Um, Okay. We're going to copy WordPress over to var www. And of course, we have to do that as root. Var dub dub dub. Now you'll see a problem. Whoops. This is owned by the Dave user. So we're going to change ownership. Um, actually, you know what? We'll do that later. Uh, right now, we're going to install, or I'm just going to become root for a second. We're going to install the rest of the prerequisites for this. So, um, php5 gd, php5 curl, a lot of WordPress uh, plugins need that. And then ssh. Install those things. Okay, that automatically restarts uh, PHP 5 Fast CGI Process Manager. We're going to go into our WordPress directory and cop. Uh, take a nice look at what's in here. We've really got a couple of things: the core files, which are these sort of uh, normal files here, and then the core directories, WP admin and WP includes. Content is where most of the user-generated content will go. That's where the uploads are. Right now, you can see there's no WP config file, but there's a WP config sample. So we're just gonna, oops. We're just gonna copy this to WP config.php. And that's really all you need to configure. Ah, man, just slow, okay. You can see this is the configuration file. I recommend reading through the comments if this is your first time playing around, but we really just need three settings here. It's the database name, the user, and the password. If your database were running on a different machine, so on some specifically database server, uh, you could put the, the IP and stuff here uh, as well. So the database name, what did we say? I don't even remember what we said. W WordPress test and then WP test. Test. And then WP test. And what's this? Whoops. Not an Emacs. WP test pass. Wonderful. So you've entered the database uh, name and the username that you created for that database, along with the password for that user. And you can pretty much save here. There's some other stuff in here, but um, nothing that we're going to need to worry about right now. Um, before you go into production, obviously you. Uh, you can auto-generate them or add your own lovely random strings here. That's it. Table prefix, if you're running many different WordPress installs on, in the same database with the same user, uh, you can change the prefix. So you could say, um, oops, you could say WP underscore uh, whatever, or, you know, site one underscore or site two underscore. That way um, you can use the same database user and database for many different WordPress installs. Uh, there you go. Okay, settings, uh, save those. I'm just gonna adjust permissions here. So I'm gonna say, um, 
we're going to change the owner recursively. Um, user Dave, so I, I still own these files, but uh, the group will be www.data, which is Nginx's group. And we'll just say WordPress should do it. Lovely. So you can see user Dave and group www.data owns these things. It's 644. That's lovely. And 755. Oh, that's weird. There's no uploads directory in there. Um, Okay, so we've created that extra directory and joined it to be the same as everything else. All right, that's pretty much it. Now we just need the nginx config, which I will paste for you in the video description here. But basically what we're gonna do is create a new file, sites available, and we'll call this WordPress test. Actually, we'll call it Dave WordPress because Okay, I'm gonna paste this in and just quickly go through it. So we're listening on port 80, we're looking for index HTML, we're gonna change this to var www wordpress. Our location block, we talked about this last time, but uh, which files we're gonna look for are 404. We're gonna use PHP 5 uh, Fast CGI Process Manager. That's where we're gonna pass PHP files off to. And the 500, uh, we're gonna use the default five error 500 page. So that'll be um, user share Nginx HTML. We're just gonna borrow the one there. I wouldn't do this uh, if you want your own custom error pages, 500 and 400 errors. The only thing that's missing is that if you had your own domain, you would set it uh, up here. So you could simply say, um, right now we're just gonna call it localhost, but this could be an IP address, or it could be your fully qualified domain name. We're just gonna say localhost. More important if you're, if you're um, having a single Nginx process dealing with a lot of different websites. So now we are, uh, we're gonna link, I wonder if we have a, the tree command. We don't, uh, let me just show you. Okay, so you can see we've got, this is the directory we're sitting in, we're sitting up here. You've got all this other stuff the main nginx config file and so on. But you've got these main two directories, sites available, where's the, this is where the actual config files live, and then sites enabled. You can see this default here, it's a link simply to over here. So this is simply a linked file to right here. We're gonna do the same thing. This is, I mentioned this before, this is sort of a smart way to be able to turn on and off sites without actually having to move real files around or change configuration files. So, this, these are the actual config files, but Nginx doesn't care. This is the config files that Nginx is actually going to read from. There's a couple other locations um, that it will try. The conf D is one of them. But so all we need to do really is create another link, just like this default, uh, and link it here. And then we're gonna remove this default link so that it serves uh, only our WordPress site. So what we'll say is, remove sites enable default. And then we're gonna make a symbolic link over between uh, between Dave WordPress and let's see, Nginx sites enabled Dave WordPress. Now you can see, uh, oops, we'll just do a tree on this directory again. And you can see we've switched it out, we've said Dave WordPress is now linked here, and that's the only active or enabled site.
Wunderbar. Uh, so we will restart. I think we only have to restart Nginx. I'm going to restart that too, just to be sure. So I've restarted both services. And now this should actually be serving our WordPress site. And we should be able to go take a look at this. Let's go to Firefox. And here we are. We're going to go to localhost. Oh, fail. Ah, it was just cached. <laughs> Too much caching on the browser side. OK, great. So when I reload that page, I see I'm automatically redirected to the WP admin install script, which will be removed, obviously, as soon as I'm done with this. And this is the rest of the WordPress setup. So all you got to do is give your site a title, call it server side, and our classically weak password, although it wouldn't know a strong password if it saw one. And we'll just put in a fake email. Obviously, I wouldn't. This doesn't matter. It just uh, adjusts the robots.txt file, which is a small text file that bots are supposed to. Bots and crawlers are supposed to read. Many of them don't. And respect. So you could say, please index everything, or please don't crawl this site, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. On a production site, you'll obviously want to turn this on, but it's not a big deal right now. So click install. Okay, we log in. We are still logging in. Did I mention WordPress kind of runs like a dog? It's just so slow. Oh, please do your thing. Okay, everything's set up. Lovely. So here's our WordPress dashboard. It exists. It's wonderful. We can check out the front page by visiting the actual site. And there you go. We're server side. Lovely. So that's that. You have just set up the whole stack, basically. You've got Linux, you've got Nginx, you've got PHP, MySQL, and now an application running on top of that stack, in this case, WordPress. There's lots more to do. I mean, especially if you're setting up WordPress, you're probably also going to want to do some security tweaking, some caching, because it's so slow. You'll want to cache generated pages. A couple of cool things we can look at for that. And the one other thing you would have to configure is some kind of mail server, because at this point, if you had a VPS, let's say, for example, that email address we just entered, it would send us a confirmation mail, blah, blah, blah. All that stuff isn't going to work. Password resets, notifications coming from WordPress, because that's MySQL trying, uh, sorry, that's PHP trying to send emails with a default mail server, which we won't have set up. Now you can set this up for WordPress with a Gmail account or some mail account that you control. But the other part that you would probably set up on a real site, if you had a group of sites, would be your own mail server. So you would install um, Postfix if you were crazy, um, or Exim, or Sendmail, I guess, if you were totally nuts. Or SMTBD, if you're looking at the BSD stuff, which is totally awesome. Maybe we'll do a thing on setting up an SMTBD server. Although, honestly, running your mail server, it's uh, It sounds attractive, but when you realize all the stuff that you actually have to do to keep your mail server from being blacklisted and to make it available and to uh, build your reputation so that uh, people won't just totally block you, like that your mail just won't get eaten by the Gmail spam filters or what have you, um, it's actually something that's probably not so awesome to run on your own in terms of services. But for stuff like this, it's fine. Okay, that's that. Congratulations. Uh, I hope you had some fun, and I hope uh, this is a good first practical project that covers sort of a whole slew of things that you actually need to realistically get something set up, and it gives you a starting point to look into some of these technologies further. I, re I really recommend you look at Nginx. It's very interesting. It's just incredibly performant, and you can do all kinds of neat things with it. Okay, hope you learned something. See you in the next video.